release for the movie? <laughs> yes, I signed a release for the movie. I sat around for eight hours before they even got on set. So if you want to know about what it means to be an expert, just ask me. I'm an expert now. <laughs> and there is a handout for this. If you don't have the handout, please raise your hand and then we we, we prepared a handout that's going to encompass uh, probably most of what we're going to talk about. And uh, I'm going to give a short introduction and we're going to, uh, I'll sit down and the panel will start taking questions. One of the first things you want to ask if, if you have a potential client who believes that he or she has been defamed is you want to ask whether they're a public figure or a private figure or you want to ask whether the defaming statements were a public concern because that raises the bar of what your client has to prove in a lawsuit for, uh, for, for defamation and the, the, the standard under which a public figure or a, or a statement of public concern falls under is actual malice. There's plenty of case law that you can read about that will explain that in more detail. So defamation consists of libel and slander, libel's written, slander is oral. The, on page two, the, the next area that falls into this uh, broad spectrum of privacy and defamation is injurious falsehood, which is a little known but useful tool if, if your client has been defamed with, or, or something has been said about your client with respect to uh, their services or their, their products that they sell. And the third is false light invasion of privacy. You know, going back to defamation, if the statement is false, that constitutes defamation. If the statement might be true, or someone's made a statement in reckless disregard of whether it was true or not, then false light invasion of privacy might apply, especially if that puts your potential client into uh, a bad light in the eyes of friends, family, and public. These first three I'm quite familiar with because I recently filed a lawsuit uh, for a client and we used all three of these. There is a, another one that's not on the sheet, and it's called, uh, you've all heard of it, intentional interference with business relationships, intentional interference with contract, that if, if any one of these three occurred, it's probably going to have an effect that you want to ask about this on someone's business relationships, and that could be a fourth cause of action that you want to make sure you include in your lawsuit if you have grounds for it. So that's something you want to make sure that that you think about, and although it doesn't fall under the rubric of defamation and privacy, it is, uh, an, it is an effect that could happen when false statements or true statements are made that fall into one of the first three categories. And then, of course, there's uh, public disclosure of embarrassing private facts, and I'm sure we'll have some examples of those as we go along. That's the fourth one we've listed. That's on page three. And that's generally something that's not newsworthy, but it was made and said or done, and, and it's harm, it harms the person that it was made about. And the last one, which is, uh, I think we're all quite familiar with, it's called misappropriation, or appropriation of someone's name, likeness, or voice without authorization or permission to promote uh, a product or service or used in some way without the permission of the person. And that could result in a lot of commercial benefit or some benefit to the person using it that, that say, Mr. Gibson here didn't get permission to use, but someone's making a lot of money off of his face on an advertisement somewhere that he didn't authorize. Uh, it's also, and one last note to, to make this brief to introduce this, when uh, if, if you file a lawsuit before, you know that if you file multiple claims, you we're allowed to make alternative claims in a lawsuit. But one thing the courts are going to look at, look at that might make your claims susceptible to a motion to dismiss is how you frame the damages. And if you look carefully at the column about uh, the interest protected in damages, some of these don't protect the same interest. They're different. So that's, you want to make sure that you, you use the uh, or state the damages properly to protect against a motion to dismiss. Because, for example, uh, defamation protects reputation, and under injurious falsehood, that protects uh, one's product, the reputation of one's product or services, and something about the quality of it. Uh, and, and in false light invasion of privacy, that protects the freedom from emotional distress. And, it, and, and fortunately for us, it doesn't have the same standard of 
of, of what's often called intentional interference or in, intentional causing of emotional distress. Uh, the, that has a really pretty high standard. It's hard to meet in most states. You have to show actual physical damage and it has to be pretty severe. But in a case like this, uh, it doesn't reach that same standard and of course we usually allow those to go on if all the other elements are there. So I'll conclude with that and we'll open it up for questions.